we've got to uh, reform the international financial institutions, that we've got to address this issue not only of how they operate and of the business and economic models that they operate by, but more particularly we've got to shift their shareholding to more broadly represent the global economy as it is today rather than it was in 1945. So this summit has grown in its ambition, if you like. It is still a summit about the crisis and recovery, uh, but it's not about returning to the world as it was, if you like, before the crisis. It envisages a more cautious, better managed global financial sector. But above all else, it envisages using the crisis to try and address issues of development, climate and trade, and of jobs, uh, in a way which is sustainable for the future. And I think Gordon Brown goes into it with uh, a real sense of the historical context of this and how much is resting on the shoulders of this summit's success. Uh, there was a summit in London in the 1930s, which is viewed by many economic historians of that period as a moment when, indeed, the leaders at that time failed to show collective statesmanship, failed to come together around a coordinated plan for recovery, uh, with dramatic consequences for the world. Uh, leading, of course, ultimately through economic protectionism to nationalism and from there to war. And uh, the feeling that while hopefully we would never again end up in quite such a dark conclusion as that, that nevertheless there really is everything to play for, that we are at a crossroads. Can countries coordinate and combine their efforts around a vision of the future world economy which reduces the imbalances between the consumer nations and the saver nations, and between the rich nations and the poor nations, and combine our strengths in a way which not just brings about a recovery as quickly as possible now, but leads to a much more sustainable, fairer, and more equitable world for the future.